We have Lauren Staley Ferry, Will County Board District 9. And please come forward, I'm sorry about that. We have Pat McGuire, State Senator for District 43. We also have Ms. Betty Gavin, City Council Member. Mr. Vincent F. Cornelius, candidate for Circuit Judge. We have Ms. Annette Parker, Will County Board. And we, of course, earlier today we had Rep a U.S. Representative Bill Foster who is no longer here, but we're glad that he was able to stop by, a U.S. Congressman. We also, excuse me, we also have State Senator Bertino Tarrant. And last but not least, our State Representative Natalie Manley. Please come forward. All right, so now the moment you all have been waiting for. If you look at your program, you go about three-fourths of the way down, you see we have a keynote speaker, Mr. Ardell Evans Sr., the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service Coordinator. And um, you all can turn the page as we get to his bio. And I know this man personally, and it, it's crazy because although I've only known Mr. Evans for about five or six years now, Seems like he's been a mentor my whole life. I don't know if you, have, if you can recognize or relate to when somebody comes into your life and they kind of take you under their wing. It seems like they've been there forever based on the impact. And it's almost like God put them there right when you needed them. Because I'm from somebody that's not from the area. So when I came up, came up here, I don't even know how, but I just remember one day he came into my class and we just started talking. And I saw the brother to brother emblem on the shirt. We had a nice conversation until this day. He's been a mentor for me, so I'm always appreciative of that. Ardell Evans continued to service to, to the community as a demonstration of the positive differences he has made in the Joliet region. He has added his expertise in marketing, relationship building, and volunteer engagement not only on his job, but to the City of Joliet Police and Fire Board and the Joliet Township Board of Education but a plethora of community, church, and statewide organizations. Over the past eight years, Ardell has been the Community Services Council of Joliet's coordinator for the Martin Luther King Day of Service, providing over 20,000 service hours of volunteer service for nonprofit agencies in partnership with Catholic Charities and the United Way of Will County. In addition to his service to the community, Ardell Evans has also been a uh, person who has been involved with the National Hookup of Black Women, um, the Community Services Council, the Joliet Region Chamber of Commerce, the Joliet Alliance for Youth. He's been a uh, participant in the NAACP, um, the Exchange Club of Joliet, Joliet Junior Club, excuse me, Joliet Junior College uh, Ross Award, a recipient, 
and also Joliet District 86 Star Citizen, and this is just to name a few. He is now currently married to Valerie Singleton Evans, and they recently got married on August 20th, 2017. <laughs> Unfortunately, and fortunately, <laughs> He has relocated to Fontana, California. Bring some of that weather to us, please. To continue his involvement and leadership working with others to make dreams a reality. Please, you all, stand to your feet and recognize and welcome your keynote speaker for today, R. Dale Levin Sr. We're good. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne, you need to come out here and get it from there. Get them to giving me a standing ovation before I even start. That would be amazing. Good. Uh, good morning, you all. Um, I want to share with you all this, that, uh, that I was not your first choice today. <laughs> you know, when we, uh, last year at the end of the event, we just sat down and discussed the the people we'd like to have come and speak, and um, I uh, had turned that over to someone, and um, we had, of course, we had a backup plan. We had a second person. Uh, I won't tell you who those people were, because you'd be very dis upset to know that you're ending up getting me. <laughs> but one of them works in Washington, D.C., another one runs WGCI radio station in Chicago. So it, wasn't, it was not the plan that, uh, that it would be me. And uh, we knew at about six or eight weeks out, I found that is when you really have to start promoting things and getting the word out. And we were right at that point uh, where we had to make a decision as to what to do. And so I did what I normally do is I, you know, go in prayer about it. And then, of course, I get to hear from my family. And in this case, it happened to be my wife, my new wife. <laughs> That's right. She told me, she said, uh, you should do it. And I just... I, bypassed it. I, yeah, right, sure. Then I heard from my sister who said, you should do it. And then I heard from, I heard from the Lord said, you, you can do this. But see, it's kind of tough coming up after the people that I've had over the past years to come here and speak. And I did this very purposely. I identified people who were very positive about education and people who were doing things here in the area. I tried to identify individuals who had something to say, people who I considered leaders. Leaders like Vince Cornelius. Vince, you want to stand up, Vince? Thank you who uh, actually uh, opened up our very first event uh, was four years ago, and he, he talked about climbing your own mountain. You still remember a message that strong and powerful like that. Uh, the next year, uh, I was still trying to find somebody again that with a Joliet connection who could come back and do some things, and honestly, I thought about my sister. I'd never heard her speak. I know she's spoken all over the country, and I said, boy, if I can get her to come back, it's her birthday too, we'll get her to come in. And, she did. At that time, we were over at the hospital, and she came in and talked about we were all emergency responders. See, a lot of you all who are here have been at every one, so you know what I'm talking about. Talked about the emergency responders. So behind that, I said, okay, now I'm at the doctor level. I need to get me another doctor. So I talked to Dr. Arvid Johnson over at the uh, University of St. Francis, and he came in and gave us a message about asking us the question, do you want to be great? And what it takes to be great is really to be a servant. And then last year, Lisa Morales came in and she offered the keynote address. And so this year, after looking at all the people that we had who came in and the things that they did, I knew that there were several others who could do it, but I'm on my way out of here and I got something to say. <laughs> but we won't be going for good. We will uh, we'll constantly come back because of the nature of the work we do. Uh, but just to give you a little background on the origin of, uh, of, this, of this particular event, it did not start originally with a brunch. What I did again, the connection to my sister down in Huntsville, Alabama, it was probably seven or eight years ago. They had a Martin Luther King uh, brunch there, is what they had, and, and our family went there. And when we walked in, there, were, there had to be five, six hundred people in the room. Uh, I got to an opportunity to, uh, I mean, immediately run up and meet some people that I thought I wanted to see and meet, and that's exactly what I did. But at that point in time, in my head, I said, Somebody should do this in Joliet. That was the same somebody who, when I moved into the Reedwood Neighborhood Organization, and I asked, where's the Reedswood Neighborhood Organization? They said, we don't have one. Somebody should start it. 
So I started, kept hearing about this person, somebody. Who is that? I am somebody. You see, we are somebody. And so we started the Ridgewood Neighborhood Organization. Uh, and then with the Ridgewood Neighborhood Organization, then I said, boom, we're going to put together a brunch and we'll do it here. Of course, we've not gotten to the numbers that we wanted to, but we started the brunch here. And I think it's something that will continue to go on. It really started 12 years ago with the day of service. When I looked out over the nation and saw what other communities were doing around Martin Luther King Day and saw that in Joliet we weren't doing anything around Martin Luther King Day except going to the three-on-three -three basketball tournament or the 50% off sale at Carson's. And we saw that the family was saying, look, we don't want our Father's Day to, remember, to be remembered as a coupon day a day off, but to be something that he did, and that would be service, to engage in service, to engage in service, to engage in service. And so we had an opportunity to speak to some people and they brought the dream together. See, what I found is that it takes a team to make a dream come true. You see, an idea can start with one person, but until you get other people who believe in that same dream and work on it, it's just a drum major without a band. Oh. Somebody marching down the middle of the street with a baton and nobody behind him. That's a sick person, ain't it? <laughs> so fortunately, these were ideas that other people said, yeah, you are absolutely right. We should do that. And as I look around the room, there are groups that are here from the beginning. The first place I went to, everybody needs a mentor, needs a friend. I am, well, three stages in life of what I've learned. Learn, earn, and teach. That's the prerequisite to everything. First, you got to learn. See, what happens is that a lot of people want to jump the learning part and go straight into the learning part, and there's a problem. But the prerequisite is to learn, then you earn, and then you teach. And once you get to the stage that, that some of us are, now we've got all of them. I'm still learning, I'm still earning, and I'm consciously and purposely reaching out and trying to teach and encourage and inspire others, just like people reached, encouraged, and inspired me. It was people like Reuben Arthur, who was a volunteer at the uh, at the YMCA, the Warren YMCA on the south end of town, who said he's going to bring a group, a group of kids together who lived in public housing and in that area and start a baseball team. See, he was a volunteer. He was an essential piece of who I am today. We talked to Ben Marino, who was my boxing coach. Well, you'd have to understand why I got involved in boxing. I like to fight. I mean, I enjoyed fighting. It was not a good day unless I had a fight. <laughs> and my, my situation was so bad, brother, that I'd look at you and say, what, what you looking at? <laughs> I just want to start the fight. And so uh, having a mother, who, having a mother who's, who has modeled volunteering throughout our lives, when she ran for the, when she ran for the uh, grade school board some years ago, first politician, when we were in the band, mom became the band president uh, of the band. Uh, when mom had a heart attack, she became the president of Mended Hearts. You see, mom has always taken lemons and made it into lemonade. And this is what we've seen, my brothers and I, and my sisters and I have seen throughout our lives, is that there's nothing that's going to be too tough that you can't get it done if you get out there and do the work. But you see, volunteers were the essential piece. So boxing wasn't enough. At that time, in our era, uh, Bruce Lee, anybody here old enough to remember Bruce Lee? All of us were going to be karate kids. Everybody was a karate person, nunchucks everywhere. This is what we did. Put me involved in karate and then wrestling. Uh, see, the things that all those sports have in common is that it was on me. When I got on the wrestling mat, it was on me. When I got on the, uh, in, the, in the boxing ring, it, it was on me. See, what I did is I learned that hard work pays off. You see, there's a lot of people who want to be leaders, but they don't want to do the work. There's a lot of people who want to jump in the front of the line, but they've not stood in line long enough to understand exactly what needs to be done. There is a process, Pastor, that we have to go through. There's a process. I want to back up for a second and recognize and acknowledge that I do have some special guests here today. One is my sister, Dr. Tammy Alexander, who came in from Huntsville, Alabama, to uh, join me today. I've got my baby sister, we call her the bird, uh, when she got older. Now she's the eagle, and she's no longer the bird, the eagle. She's here from, are you in Rockville, Maryland still now? She's in the high rent district, Rockville, Maryland. That's my sister, Ron Dealey. Then I've got my brother, he's also my elder brother, my pastor. 
and uh, his lovely wife is here with him, my brother Steve Evans and his wife Alicia, and my church family here in Illinois, the Leap of Faith family, you all are all here. Thank you. My friends from the Joliet Police Department. Yes, that's right, they're my friends. I would have said that when I was 16. That's right. But I tell you what, police officers are just people too. What I found is that people say, Dale, how do you get all these people to come to your events? You know how I get them to do it? I ask. Right. Boom, it doesn't take rocket scientists to just, to just ask. And uh, some years ago, uh, I lived uh, on Mac McDonough Street. We lived on McDonough Street, and in front of our front yard was a baseball field. If you ever come over the McDonough Street Bridge, you'll see that little baseball field there. Uh, and at that base field, ball field is where we grew up. That was my front yard for the rest of my, uh, for most of my life. And so we know that we have some great programs here in, in Joliet for baseball, but a lot of the kids who live in the low income areas don't have access to them. They got great programs, but they don't have access. And so about, I don't know, time starts to fly, uh, uh, Commander, maybe nine, 10 years ago, we talked to the Joliet Police Department and said, we want to start a baseball team. And we called it a league of our own. And what we did was simply got that thing all cut up and cleaned up and, and had a baseball program. And my first coaches were Joliet police officers. Um, I've had opportunities, go ahead. When we, had, when we had a situation on the south end where we had a basketball court down there, I don't know how good this name was, Vince, but I said, we need to have a three-on-three -three shootout. But I didn't mean, you know what I mean? And that's exactly, that's, that's exactly what we did. Is we called it the three-on-three -three shootout. And for about eight years, the people who were there first and the people who were there last were the Joliet Police Department. And they wouldn't go off without a hitch. And I greatly appreciate that. That goes along with every other event, every other march, every other rally that we had to make a call for. They were always there. If you, if you call, they'll come. You see, what happens is, is that the newspaper is able to find bad news. You have to take good news to them. You see, there'll be a lot of events that we have and things that we do that I've heard people say, why isn't the Herald News here? I said, did you tell them? All right. <laughs> see, you can complain if they knew about it and didn't come. But once you don't tell them about it, you can't assume that somehow out of the blue, they're going to know you're having an event and they don't show up. And then it becomes, them people don't never cover our stuff. Not true. See, the other things that I hear often is that there's nothing to do in Joliet. Well, over the last week, I thought my name was I thought you were gone. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's not my name. Uh, they would say, I thought you were gone, because some people are still kind of in the, in the mix, don't know exactly what's, what's going on with me. But they say, I, I thought you were gone. I said, no, I'm still here. And see, the reason, the thing, the thing that I want to do most of all, uh, Brother Crawford over there, a dear friend of mine, is to let people know that everything people say is not true. You know, see, people will sit and tell you that there's nothing to do in Joliet. It's a lie. There are no options and opportunities for kids in Joliet. That's a lie. You see, the reason I know that is because I know where those opportunities and options are. Instead of talking about what's not here, people need to learn about what is. Do you know about the Hire the Future program at the uh, employment office where young people who are underage can go there and get a work permit and go to work? Did you know about the Explorers program where we got kids right now that need to be going into law enforcement, need to be getting engaged and involved in that Explorers program? Do they know about workforce services where you can go in, find a career on two pages list of things that they have and based on your income, you can go through there and get it done for free, no cost at all. Did you know that Joliet Junior College has programs for people who've completed school and people who are still in school? It's a lie. Did you know that there is about a $2 million facility? I don't know how many people here know that. You raise your hand. There's about a $2 million facility. I asked this to a group of, uh, of ministers in the area about two years ago. And they were about two miles away from this location. I'm going to ask how many of you all know that there is a $2 million facility less than two blocks from where we are right now for youth? How many people know that there is and where it is? Bad. That's, and see, when people come to you to help and you don't know, you need to get to know. The Salvation Army. $2 million facility. You walk inside there, they got new computer labs. They got things that they can do up there every day. When you want to know about where there's food, there are food pantries everywhere. Forest Park Community Center. Community Center, there with computers and things. Don't tell me that there's nothing to do here. You can't tell me that there are no options and opportunities for people here. And what we have to do as leaders is to know where those things are so we can share that information with them. You see, what happened with me and what we should do now is plant seeds in people. You see, you all know what seeds are. Like today, if I planted a seed 
and came back tomorrow and wondered, where's the plan? That wouldn't be wise, would it? See, because it's going to take time. It's going to take time. See, the seeds that were planted in me were seeds that were placed in me by Charlie Kane some years ago. When he said, son, you should go into politics. It was some years ago. It took, it took 20 or 30 years for that to manifest itself, but somebody planted that seed in me at an early age. It was, it was my wrestling coach who told me, you know what, you can do more, be more more, give more, and help other people by doing it. He planted a seed in me. Years later, I went on to coach at Dirksen Junior High School in 1982, and after four years, that group of young people won the state title. Four years later, they went on to high school and won the high school state title in wrestling, one of only two that Jolly Central's have ever done. You can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples that come from a seed. See, we don't know we don't know what word that we speak to somebody that's going to be positive, that's going to change, encourage, inspire them, and change their whole lives. I've had an opportunity to talk to the chief of police to learn that his journey. See, the people you look at now are not always the people that they are, were. That came, over, that came over time. And see, what we need to do is always keep pulling out the weeds. You got to keep pulling out the weeds. And sometimes those weeds are in your house. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I was reading the other day, and uh, like you were saying, social media has some good things on there, there's no doubt about it. And he said that there's a, there are some people who have a problem for every solution. That was <laughs> Albert Einstein said that. People can cover, do you know anybody here know anybody that can have a problem? They can tell you why you can't do it, why you shouldn't do it, and why it won't work. See, what we need to do is have more people who have a can-do attitude, even in the midst of, you know, the dark days that we appear to have in our country. It's, there are things now that I find myself addressing that I thought were, this is 2018. There are things that I didn't think I would, we would have to address anymore, but these are things that keep coming up. But see, what some will do is they will run and hide, and they'll quit. But I challenge you to get involved, to get engaged, you might say, how do I get involved and get engaged? Sometimes you just have to ask. Know what your passion is. You see, early on, when I got involved with the Spanish Community Center, it was because I had moved from El Paso, Texas, and mi nombre es español, poquito, okay? <laughs> and so I wanted to continue to work with that community. And what I can tell you is this, is that you can rise as high in an organization as you're willing to volunteer. As soon as you'll say yes, I'll do it not know exactly what you're going to be doing or what you've just signed up for, but you know you want to help. It's like organizations like Catholic Charities who said, I look at the mission of the organization before I engage with it. They said they want to engage people who want to help. They want to help people and engage other people who want to do the same thing. That's a mission that I can stand by. If that's something that you actually do and it is what they do. Here's how it starts, young people. University of St. Francis, you all are all here, and some other people scattered on the table. Young people and others scattered on the table. You get that? You got that? Got you. Okay. What I want you all to do is to, uh, the way it all starts is by connecting with people. And it's as simple, it's as, simple as saying, where's Langendorfer? He knows it real well. Hello, my name is. Some of you kids, y'all say Slim Shady. It ain't Slim Shady. <laughs> it starts like this. Hello, my name is. That's how you connect with somebody. That's immediately how you connect. Then if you can communicate with them, have a conversation. It doesn't take long after that hello, whether you know you even want to communicate with that person. Communicate, and then what happens with me normally is I see how we can work together. Then we start planning. We start planning. What do we can do? What can we do? What can we make happen? What dream can we make a reality? See, because it all starts with a dream, just a thought. You sow that thought, then you start connecting with other people. You get other people who can buy into the vision and the idea, and then boom, you're on your way to getting something done. I say you got to plan it, you got to participate, and then, of course, I think it's very important that you celebrate. You know, successes that you had, and then, I don't know which one comes first, the evaluation or the celebration, but either way you go, you need to do them both. Evaluate, celebrate, and then jump back in there and do it again. Again, I told you, you can rise as high as you can serve. Uh, what I noticed when I came home uh, this, this time back is that uh, over the last few days, there have been a number of deaths. In fact, we know today that there are probably two or so funerals, one very large of a, a good friend of mine who was a 
who is a wrestler, and, and, and if y'all would, with me, uh, along with three others, we're just gonna have a, a, a moment of silence, uh, remembering them and their families, and, and for me, the impact that those individuals had on my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. This is one of my favorite poems. I've got two of them. This is one, and I'm coming to the second one. I read, I read of a man stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from beginning to end. He noted that the first name came was the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time he spent alive on earth and now only those who loved them knew what that little line was worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and how we love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things that you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real, and always try to understand the way other people feel. And be less quick to anger. Help me, Lord. That's personal. That was for me. Be less quick to anger and show appreciation more. And love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash will only last a while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Volunteers have been the essential piece in my life. They've, they've been road marks for me. You know, I've had detours, and I tell people all the time that everybody in this room, we're all the same. Of course, we dress different. We came from different neighborhoods. We have different interests in school to God, but there's one thing that we all have that's in common, and that's 24 hours in a day. The question is, how are you spending, wasting, or investing your time? So when you look back over your dash, do you know that you spoke a good word into a young kid who might be horrible and tell him you could be a great boxer? It's something that they're bad at that we can take and switch and give them an opportunity. We need to speak hope into the lives of people who have no hope. Work with the Housing Authority for 13 years, eight months. I would go up on, on, uh, to, the, to the developments and I would ask young people, what do you want to be when you grow up? You all know what it is. What's the number one? Rapper. Absolutely. No, basketball and a uh, rapper. Yeah, those two. Basketball, and, basketball players and rappers. That was their dream. That was, that was their hope. And then a couple years later, I just want to get through the day. I just want to get through the day. I have no dreams. I have no, no hopes. See, because then you have faith in nothing. See, because faith is the substance of things you hope for and the evidence of things you can't see. So this here was already happening before it ever happened. I'd walk through this room and see it filled with people, like I'll do on Monday. I walk through there, and in my mind, I already see this place filled with people. And I also see myself walking into boardrooms where people who've joined that board because they were involved in something to find out about what they did. See, because I believe that that's going to happen. I don't know who it's going to happen with, but I believe that it will happen. Some of us have taken our dreams and buried them in the backyard. Just gave up on them because life sometimes doesn't go exactly the way you want it to. I want to encourage and inspire you to go back and dig them up. Dream again. Have hope again, in spite of the way things look. See things in your, in your spirit person, and then do the work. See, because a dream is one thing. It's another thing to do the work. You've got to get up and do the work and face any frustrations that may come your way with a, as I continue to work on me, with a smile. There are some other folk that I'd like to recognize before I leave today.